Tech will kick off this session with thoughts on tags. All right, now for something completely different. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm an incoming PhD student at MIT under Adam, and I uh, just finished my undergrad at Stanford with uh, Caroline and Kunle. So I'll be talking about tags, which is a new uh, framework for distributed memory modeling. So to set the scene, reconfigurable data flow architecture has been gaining popularity lately in response to the growing demand for throughput-oriented machines. An RDA is composed of a grid of interconnected memory and compute units, something like this. Um, this allows for efficient utilization of both the vector level and pipeline level parallelism exhibited by modern data, data intensive applications like machine learning, um, scientific computing, and what have you. So, RDA's ongoing proliferation motivates the need for new memory models. First, I will explain why memory modeling is important for RDAs. One of the major motivations for doing the memory framework for RDA is the fact that they are inherently difficult to program. The massively decentralized execution of the streaming data flow paradigm makes programming especially difficult because deadlocks are hard to avoid. And um, if you're a program data for accelerators, you probably have run into deadlock at some point in your life. The loops are a much more natural construct that we already know how to program. And so why don't we have a compiler that generates a streaming data flow from a loop level representation? But such a set compiler must reason about memory, memory modeling, both for correctness and for efficiency. The second part of the question is why we need a new memory modeling framework. So existing frameworks for reason about memory modeling fall short of the unique requirement for RDAs. And the challenge with applying traditional memory models to RDA boils down to the fact that they're all designed for processor-like architecture. And RDA is something completely different. Processor memory models set clear boundaries between the software and hardware's sphere of influence, where the hardware model is usually rigidly defined with clear-cut separation of concerns. Since RDAs present a high degree of reconfigurability, it provides very few guarantees which presents itself as an extremely weak memory model. The only ordering guaranteed by the hardware is sequential consistency within a single compute unit and FIFO ordering within between, uh, each link between two compute units. This leaves the software with the most of the responsibility in terms of guaranteeing memory order correctness. Here's a pictorial illustration of the differences between CPU and RDA memory models. CPU memory models are generally concerned with the sequence of instruction in some given program order, and when their effects to memory are visible to other instructions. One example properly preserved by the hardware is same address program order, which is enforced by hardware enforced uh, coherence, uh, coherence protocol. Whereas different address, uh, different address program order um, generally need additional software, software defined synchronization for, uh, on most architectures. And how do we exhibit several differences? There are hundreds of compute units that each enforce program order locally for a handful of memory operations. And there are also pairwise FIFOs between compute units that enforce implicit FIFO ordering semantics. Beyond that, any additional communication must be done through an intermediate memory unit, at which point the software is left with all the burdens of ensuring memory correctness. And there are hundreds of such memory units, each with potentially independent and different memory ordering semantics. This is a direct consequence of RDA's emphasis on fine-grained parallelism, which can yield significant performance, but often at the cost of programmability. This motivates a simple framework that allows users to, to provide annotations that can assist the compiler in reasoning about memory ordering correctness and giving you performance. Now we present one for, uh, proposed solution, which is tags, and I derive it from two rudimentary examples. First, consider this simple program between a producer F and a consumer X, uh, G to the array X. If the user wants uh, sequential consistency, the compiler must insert an edge between F and G, given that they can be mapped to different compute units. To do this, F will publish a token whenever a write to X occurs. And that signal triggers G to evaluate a ready function, which dictates when the functionality associated with that node is ready to be run. So in essence, the user is tagging each memory operation with the desired synchronization scheme. Now for a slightly more complicated example, where we have two producers, F and H, 
and G, uh, single co consumer G. And again, if se uh, sequential consistency is desired, explicit edges need to be inserted by the compiler from F to G and from H to G. As we had before, each producer still produces a token on each write. And the consumer now has to, two separate ready signals. An issue arises if the two signals arrive at different times. In this case, we need to keep track of a separate notion of readiness for each edge. So we need some state. Now this can be done with an update function that tracks some local token count for each separate edge. So we've essentially defined three functions here. Publish gets called when a write occurs and signals the token downstream that the new data can be read. Ready then gets triggered to allow the reader to proceed based on some custom uh, readiness condition. And then update is needed to track local state in the, state in, the, in, the, in the case of multiple inputs. So in this case, the ready signal consumed by the actual uh, consumer is actually an aggregate of multiple different ready signals. And so here we use a Boolean uh, conjunction between, the, between them. But you can use any Boolean function to aggregate multiple ready signals. To maximally capture the available reconfigurability of RDAs, we can formalize our framework slightly more generically. Where signal, where signal and the update type can be any polymorphic, uh, polymorphic type. And the functions themselves can be any black boxes, given that they satisfy whatever resource constraints are, are set, set for by the RDA hardware. Now we'll present the uh, novel use case of tax, which is the notion of bounded desynchronization. Consider this neutral recurrence between two large vectors x and y, where subsequent iterations are computed based on their prior value. This is a common pattern seen in iterative algorithms widely used in machine learning. For algorithms like this, there are two kinds of efficiency. First, statistical efficiency tells you how many iterations you need until you reach convergence, which is depends on which depends on a particular problem and its implementation. Second, hardware efficiency tells you how long it takes to run each iteration, which also which depends on the hardware and the implementation. So there's a trade-off to be made between the two to maximize end-to-end -end performance. But this trade-off is harder to make when the hardware itself is reconfigurable, reconfigurable, which opens up a lot more possibilities. So in this case, to increase hardware efficiency, we can reduce synchronization by allowing X and Y to run ahead without communicating updates until some desired bound is reached to, to, to ensure that we don't lack that stack up too much on the statistical efficiency side. So in this case, this, that bound is delta. And we want to map this app applications of this pattern efficiently to our distributed data flow architecture. So here's an example implementation using tags, where instead of communicating the entire vector on each update, you only send one integer that tells you which iteration you are. And so this reduces communication cost by a factor of delta, because that's, you're only communicating the entire uh, vector every delta iteration. And so this increases hardware efficiency at some acceptable cost of statistical efficiency. And tags can potentially make designing algorithms of this type easier by provide, providing uh, application writers a simple yet structured framework to describe applications of this pattern and have a compiler automatically map it to RDA hardware efficiently. I will close with some potential future work on uh, tax potential uh, correspondence to session types. So session types have been well studied with decades of research on type level deadlock avoidance guarantees. However, session types cannot directly execute on RDA hardware without some form of translation. Tax on the other side are a much more natural abstraction for RDA hardware, where RDA as a set of distributed local state updates are naturally captured by tag semantics. Therefore, we believe a translation from session types to tags can be useful for programming RDAs. In one direction, tags can potentially serve as an IR in between session type and hardware. Um, and on the other hand, you can potentially translate tags to session types to use the existing uh, types of some session types to see if you have a deadlock or not. So in conclusion, we present TAC, which is a new memory modeling framework to address the unique challenges of RDAs. And I'll be happy to take any questions later on.